The appearance of local contractors in this video does not imply an endorsement of their services by the Anne Arundel County Department of Health. A complete listing of contractors and haulers can be found in the yellow pages or by contacting the Department of Health. Every day, the average household uses approximately 250 gallons of water, washing dishes, cooking, doing laundry, and taking showers or baths. All of that water ends up going down the drain as wastewater. But have you ever wondered what happens to it after that? Here in Anne Arundel County, many homes aren't hooked up to a city sewer. Instead, a highly efficient on-site sewage treatment system called the septic system is used. Hi, I'm Susan House, and when I moved here, I knew I had a septic system, but I wasn't sure what it was or how to properly maintain it. Six years later, I had to spend thousands of dollars to repair my failing system because I didn't do a few simple things to maintain it. A properly maintained system can provide not only effective treatment and disposal of your household wastewater, but it can last indefinitely. In this program, we are going to look at what a septic system is and how it works, what can cause the system to fail and how to prevent it, and what type of regular maintenance needs to be performed. A regularly maintained system can provide efficient wastewater treatment and also save you a lot of money and headaches. But before you learn how to maintain your system, you first need to know what a system is and how it works. Your septic system is a highly efficient wastewater treatment system buried in your yard. A pressure distribution system consists of the septic tank, the pump chamber with pump, a pressure dosed bed, and the natural soil. A pressure dosed bed is located either in ground or above ground in a constructed mound. The septic tank stores the wastewater from your house and separates out the solids. The effluent flows from the tank into the pump chamber and is pumped to the pressure dosed bed where the effluent is dispersed into the gravel and then the soil naturally treating it before it gets returned to the groundwater. Here's how it works. Wastewater flows from your home through the pipes and into the first chamber of your two chamber septic tank. Here the household waste separated into three layers. Heavy solids settle to the bottom of the tank, forming a layer called sludge. The lighter solids, like grease and paper, float to the top, forming the scum layer. The sludge and scum layers are what need to be regularly pumped from your tank and hauled away. Between the sludge and scum layers is a zone of relatively clear liquid called effluent. The effluent flows out of the first chamber and into the second chamber. Here, the separation process is repeated. The effluent then flows into the pump chamber. In the pump chamber is a pump, an on-off float, and a high water alarm float. When the effluent rises to the level of the on float, the pump begins gently forcing small doses of effluent under pressure to the pressure dosed bed. The small doses of effluent are evenly distributed under pressure throughout the pressure dosed bed and then filters through the gravel and into the soil which treats it before it returns to the groundwater. It is important that this effluent receive a high level of natural treatment so that it doesn't pollute the groundwater. Remember, anything you pour into the ground can eventually end up in the groundwater and possibly even your drinking water. To learn how the county determines where to install your system and what type of system to install, we're going to talk with Don Curdian, a sanitarian from the Anne Arundel County Department of Health. So Don, the people that are going to build on this site have all their permits in place? Yes. Now I know in Anne Arundel County they require a building site have enough room for not only the initial system but also enough additional space for two replacement systems. Now once they determine they have enough room for this and the reserve sites, what else do you take in consideration? Well the most important thing we're looking for is that the soil perks. Mm -hmm. After that we take into consideration any neighbor water wells, creeks, streams, or any steep slopes near the site. Most importantly we're looking for good soil and groundwater conditions. And what type of conditions are you looking for in the soil? What we're trying to achieve is adequate treatment of the effluent before it's introduced into the groundwater. Mm -hmm. And what we need for that is good perking soils mm -hmm. and a separation to the groundwater. 
So you're saying that you want the effluent to pass through the soil, not too fast, but not too slow. Right. If it passes too fast, then there's not enough treatment before it's introduced into the groundwater, mm -hmm. which could pollute the groundwater. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if it's too slow, then it could pond on the surface, which could lead to a serious health hazard. I see. So over there, the house we built, and the septic tank about 20 feet from it? Right. And right here, an above-ground pressure-dosed bed or mound system will be built. What is the purpose of the mound? On this site, the groundwater is only three feet from the surface. Mm. Therefore, we can't install a subsurface drain field because there's not enough distance between the drain field to the groundwater. The effluent has to have that distance to be treated before it's introduced into the groundwater or it could contaminate the drinking water source. Mm -hmm. To solve that problem, we build a mound which provides the separation from the pressure distribution bed to the groundwater which allows enough time and distance to treat the sewage before it's introduced into the groundwater. To see an above ground pressure dosed bed or mound system under construction and better understand how it works. We're going to talk with Dave Kerr. Hi, Dave. Hi, Susan. I see you have the septic tank in. Just finished it up this morning. So this is what the septic tank in my backyard looks like. I didn't realize it was this big. Yeah, they come in different sizes. The larger the home, the larger the tank needs to be. So the wastewater is treated here in the septic tank, and just the effluent is passed on to the drain field. That's right. Everything from the house enters through this pipe. Settling occurs in the front chamber of the septic tank. Additional settling occurs in the second chamber and just to clear liquids leave the tank to head to the drain field. I think that's what a lot of people don't understand. They think that everything goes to the drain field. No, it's a two-part system. The, the tank being the first part, its job is to remove those solids and just have the clear effluent leave. Now I know from personal experience that if you don't get your tank pumped on a regular basis, the sludge and scum can get into the drain field and cause the system to fail and that can be an expensive repair. It is expensive and it also the hassle of having your yard torn up and the inconvenience of not being able to use your household plumbing. Well, let's go take a look at the rest of the system. Okay. Well, Susan, this is the mound where the treatment takes place. It's constructed primarily of a coarse sand. We level that sand place six inches of gravel down, lay our distribution pipe network on top of that gravel, place additional gravel on top of the pipes, and filter cloth. Now this, this mound is under construction. Its completion will be like this. All the pipes are covered, filter cloth on all of it, and then the soil that you see in your backyard. So if there was enough distance between the surface and the groundwater, you wouldn't need the mound system? Exactly. We would build a pressure bed, just like you see here, gravel with the same pipe work. There'd be no need for the sand. We would build this directly at the ground surface. And the effluent that is separated from the wastewater in the septic tank is pumped here and distributed through the network of pipes, but how is it dispersed? The effluent enters through the larger diameter pipe, flows into all these small pipes, in the bottom of those are small holes drilled at even distances to get distribution across the entire gravel bed. So it's very much like a soaker hose you may use in your garden. Exactly. We're looking for even distribution to get good treatment time, but not overload the system. And the pump, back in the pump chamber, has an on-off float so that it isn't running all the time. No, it only runs for a few minutes at a time. We set a float level to turn it on when the effluent from the septic tank comes to that level. It moves the effluent into the gravel bed, down into the ground, continues pumping till it reaches our off level, shuts the pump off automatically. Septic systems, if properly taken care of, are highly efficient wastewater treatment systems that can last a long time. But if not taken care of properly, they can fail. That is why the Anne Arundel County requires you have enough property for two replacement systems. Over there are the reserve sites. Eventually, when the system fails, that is where the new mound system would go, so you must never build on your reserve sites. And since mound systems use the upper soil layers to build the mound and treat the effluent, it is important never to grade or disturb these areas. Oh, 
Owning a home is a big investment. You want to protect that investment by doing annual maintenance, such as cleaning gutters, painting, and making sure everything works properly. Your septic system is no different. It also requires regular maintenance to keep it operating properly. But in order to do this, there are some important things you need to know about your system. Earlier, I told you about the pump in the pump chamber. The pump has an on-off float that controls when and how much effluent is pumped to the drain field. There's also a high water alarm float that sounds an alarm if there's a problem. Usually, the high water alarm panel is located in the garage, but could be located elsewhere. If you don't know where your alarm panel is, you'll need to check with your installer. If your high water alarm sounds, it means your system is unable to function properly or keep up with the use of the system. Oftentimes, this means the tank needs pumping or in more severe cases, damage to your drain field may have occurred. If your alarm goes off, you'll need to reset it and practice strict water conservation measures until your installer can inspect your system. To keep your system functioning properly, you will need to do some annual maintenance, which includes having periodic inspections of your system and having your tank pumped by a licensed hauler when necessary. To find out what needs to be inspected and when you need to have your tank pumped, we are going to talk with Bob, a licensed hauler. I have him on a maintenance contract to come inspect my system on a regular basis. Hi, Bob. Hi, how you doing? Good. I see you have my tank exposed. Now, you've shown me where my tank is, but if someone didn't know where theirs was, how would they find it? Uh, you've got locator caps. They're located on top of the lids of the tank. Uh, one in the front, one in the back. Or you can contact your builder or Anne Arundel Health Department. They'll have it on record. Now, when you're inspecting a tank, what are th some things you're looking for? Uh, the water level in the tank. Uh, that indicates that everything's coming from the house into the tank and out to your drain fields properly. And uh, the scum layer, uh, make sure there's no ponding in your yard. How often do you get your tank pumped? Uh, we recommend any time between three to four years. Uh, depending on the usage of, uh, of your system, how many people you have in your house. Uh, obviously, the more people you have in the house, the more usage, you want to have it done more often. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to have your system inspected on some regular basis. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. While Bob is inspecting the tank, let's see what he will be checking for. Remember earlier, I said that in the tank, the sludge settles to the bottom, the scum layer floats to the top, and the relatively clear layer of effluent forms in the middle. Well, if the sludge reached the bottom of the outflow tee, sludge could go to the mound and could clog the pipes and soil causing damage to your system. Your tank will also need to be pumped if the scum layer gets too thick. The important thing to remember is to have your system inspected on a regular basis by a reputable licensed hauler. They will check that it's operating properly and whether it needs to be pumped. It may cost you a little bit to sign a maintenance contract, but in the long run, it can save you a lot of money if it prevents your system from failing. So how do you know if you have a failing system? We're going to talk with Bill Deck, an inspector with the Anne Arundel County Department of Health. He's seen a variety of failing systems while working for the county. So Bill, you do a lot of inspections. Can you give me a common reason that a system would fail? Some of the most common reasons for septic system failure are uh, improper usage mm -hmm. and lack of periodic pumping of the septic tank. What are some examples of improper use? Well, for example, uh, even though county code prohibits the use of garbage disposals uh, on septic system, uh, some people do use them and they don't realize what troubles they may be causing. What is it about a garbage disposal that makes them so bad? They create a lot of uh, fine solids which don't settle out into the septic tank. Uh, they can go on to clog your drain fields and uh, in fact the situation is as bad as not having your septic tank pumped out at all. So what about chemicals and bleach, detergent, what effect do they have on the system? Well, what you have to remember is the septic system is a natural processing environment, so you have to be very careful with any sort of chemical usage. Are there some things I can look for that will warn me of a failing system? Uh, if your system's overloaded or you're having some problems, maybe your drain fields are clogged, uh, what you may notice are some muddy areas forming around your drain fields. And uh, this is usually accompanied by uh, the smell of sewage. And what's happening here is, is that the sewage effluent uh, is no longer seeping into the ground like it was designed to do. And instead, it's coming to the surface. And uh, this is a very unhealthy situation. And it's something that needs to be taken care of immediately. Hmm. 
Now, I've heard slow running drains can be a sign of a failing system. Why is that? Uh, well, once again, if you're having a uh, problem with your septic system, your drain fields uh, are clogged, uh, you may see some signs of slow draining plumbing. Uh, your shower drains, for example, may not be working as well as they used to. And uh, if this problem is left uncorrected, uh, you could have sewage backing up in your house. Some other things you should know are, don't pour cooking grease or other oils down the drain. It builds up quickly in the septic tank, and if it gets to the drain field, it may clog it. Never use septic tank additives. These products have not been proven to be effective. The natural processes of your septic system are effective for wastewater treatment. Do not put materials that won't easily break down in your system, such as paper towels, diapers, cigarettes, or plastics. Practice water conservation. The more water you pump through your system, the more stress you put on it. If you have a swimming pool or a hot tub, don't drain it in your system. Let the water run into the ground away from your drain field. If you have water conditioning equipment, backwash water with a high iron content can clog your system, causing it to prematurely fail. Consult with the health department on alternative disposal options for backwash. Wash full loads of clothes and distribute your washing throughout the week so you don't overload the system. Consider quick showers instead of baths. Fix leaky fixtures and consider installing low flow fixtures for toilets and shower heads. These simple practices may greatly extend the life of your system and allow it to operate at its best. Also, once you know where your tank, mound, and reserve areas are located, you want to protect them. Do not do any grading or disturb these areas and never drive over them. The weight can compact the soil and break the pipes, causing your system to fail. Never build a structure or place anything on your drain field or reserve area. When landscaping, make sure it is compatible with your system. Roots can damage pipes and clog the drain field. Grass is the best cover for a drain field. In this video, we looked at what a septic system is and how to take care of that system. It is easy to understand how septic systems can be ignored, out of sight, out of mind. But the importance of a well-maintained system is essential. By following the simple preventative maintenance steps outlined in this program, you will not only be saving yourself a lot of costly repairs, but you'll be doing your part to preserve the clean water resources and the environment of Anne Arundel County that we all enjoy. For more information about on-site sewage systems and proper system maintenance, contact the Anne Arundel County Department of Health at 410-222-7193.